I don't have my keys. Do your keys? <laughs> <laughs> nah, no chance. I'm going to create something today that, if done correctly, will outlive us all. My inspiration came from here. This terrarium is a fully self-sustaining ecosystem. It was made over 63 years ago and hasn't been opened or watered since 1972. Who made this terrarium? David Latimer is a man who lives in the UK, and when he made the terrarium back in 1960, I'm fairly sure he had no idea it would go on to become one of, if not the most famous terrariums in the world. Mine survives longer than Mr. Latimer's. It'll be 63 years from now. The year will be 2086, and I'll be 94 years old. That's insane. How old did that make you? Huh? Oh, uh, oh, 58. Wait a minute. Don't, no, don't actually, that would make no. That would make you minus five, you're older than me. No, no, no. Okay, dude. <laughs> but why would I bother doing this? Well, terrariums have saved my life. I've been through some really difficult times and having a creative outlet that's intertwined with horticulture has been a real superpower when it comes to managing my own mental health. Last year, I did a series of demos to over a thousand children at Great Ormond Street Hospital and seeing how fascinated they were with the whole process really opened my eyes. Terrarium building is a wonderful way to get children interested in horticulture and it's something I truly believe can change the world. And if I can create a terrarium that outlives me, then maybe I can pass that on to my own children. That I don't actually have yet. But how exactly am I going to make a terrarium that outlives me? First is the container. Looking at the picture from the news article, he's used a big carboy as the container, and thankfully I have this three-year-old terrarium that desperately needs a revamp. Now, which plants has he used? The article says that Mr. Latimer has used the Tradescantia in his terrarium, so we need to go and find one. Jungle Club. Nice. Oh, what's... Oh, what's this? Oh, it's uh, just a silver play button. Ooh. Cool, so we'll head to yours then to do the... Uh, no, there's a leak at mine. We need, to, we need to find somewhere else to put this terrarium. Your conservatory is really bright. That is true. So, yeah, here we are at my house. So and as I'm walking here right now, and Ben doesn't know this yet, um, but I've realised it, is uh, that I don't have my keys. You do? No, I don't. You really don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, can you get him through the back? This is simple, right? Oh, that's... I feel like I have a longer arm than you. Oh, yeah, you probably do, actually. Nah, no chance. Oh, OK, no, I actually do have them. Yeah. This is the conservatory. Lots of light in here, or...? Yeah, I think so. Maybe cleared those books. A general rule of thumb is to throw and see as much of the sky as possible without sitting in the sun. I really don't want to make a mess in here, so I think we should make it on this table outside. I forgot the lecker. Can I use the gravel on the floor? Yeah? OK. The first thing I'm going to do is add a drainage layer into the terrarium. It allows any water from the substrate layer to drain off. <sighs> like this is really heavy now and that's exactly why we should use lacquer. And the whole point of this is that it stops any soil from falling into the gravel on the bottom. Using a knife, be very careful. It's actually a plastic mesh, not a metal one. If you use a metal mesh, it's going to rust. So the knife didn't work. Let's use the scissors instead. I always measure the circumference of the terrarium and make it a little bit bigger, just so soil doesn't seep down the sides. It doesn't have to be exact. And this perfect circle is going to go on top of the stones. Oh wait, I need a big stick. So you don't actually need any specialist tools for a job like this, just a very long stick. Oh. I think I'd challenge you in a sword fight, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. I have my big stick. Oh. Right, try and get this as central as possible. Next, 
charcoal. Adding charcoal to the terrarium will help soak up any wastewater. It's also going to take any horrible toxins or nasty bacteria from the soil. So it's a good thing to add, but it's really important you use charcoal that doesn't have a catalyst. And this is too big, so I'm going to break it down. This is really dusty, so make sure you do it outside. And what I'm actually going to do is soak this in some water first because that stops it being so dusty. Soaking it in water really makes such a difference. Normally I wouldn't use compost, but I saw that Mr. Lassimer had used some in his and his has survived 63 years. So let's follow his method. This is actually a really, really good quality peat-free compost, which if you're going to use compost, definitely use this sort of stuff. This is uh, by a company called Melcourt. It's always a challenge to get soil into a hole like this. Some cardboard. Right, I'm just gonna add a few handfuls of this sphagnum moss just on top of the charcoal. It's gonna help keep things really nice and moist in there. Yeah. I think this is the exact kind of Tradis Gantia that David Latimer used in his terrarium. So I could leave this as it is and it's pretty much done. However, I have something that's going to increase our chances of success. Imagine if we had a bug that we could add in there that would feed on any mold or decaying matter, stopping them from becoming a problem later down the line. They were so small that you could hardly see them and that the oxygen the plants produced would keep them alive. Well, we're in luck as these springtails would do exactly that. So this is a freshly planted terrarium and the springtails aren't really going to have much to feed on so I'm going to add some leaf litter in there. This is going to provide them with a long-term food source and once this runs out the Tradescanti will have grown to a point where it's shedding its older leaves and then they will feed on those. It doesn't really look like much at the moment but those Tradescanti cuttings are going to grow really really fast and in a few weeks or maybe a few months it's going to be nice and full and it's going to look a lot more aesthetically pleasing than it does right now. Who wants to see a massive terrarium? Me. Yeah? Is it bigger than your one? <laughs> Take a look. Do you think there's any bugs in there? Yeah. Yeah? What kinds? It's like spring. Yeah, 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 that's right. You've got the first word right. Tails? Yeah, bang on, spring tails. You're learning really well. <laughs> We're gonna put a lid on, then we're never gonna take it off. So hopefully, this terrarium will outlive us all. Which is, I know, it's crazy, isn't it? So 63 years from now is 2086, and I'll be 94 years old. How old could I be? So you're gonna be 71? Yeah. Yeah. My goal here was to create a terrarium that will outlive us all. But during the process, I realised that this is a lofty ambition and it's really about undertaking a task that will hopefully inspire as many people as possible. If I can create something that I can pass on to my children, then wonderful. But getting as many people interested in this wonderful hobby is absolutely my main focus, whether or not this terrarium outlives us all. Updates are mandatory and I'll keep you posted with how this terrarium fares over the months and hopefully years to come. Thank you for watching. You may have just seen the construction of what will become the oldest terrarium in the world. I'm just going to take this.